and welcome to today's interview with the wonderful John Esperian. John is an award-winning freelance technical writer based in South Wales of the UK. He's the guy you go to when you need help producing simple, clear and elegant content. He's also a super nerd which makes him instantly cool in my world. I'm sure you'll agree. Let's say hello, shall we? Hi John, welcome to uh, the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm very well, Chloe. Thank you for inviting me. It's my first video podcast, so um, I know I'm in good hands and um, yeah, really delighted to be here. Oh wow, how exciting. I feel, I feel honoured to be here first. <laughs> Hopefully I do a good job. I'm sure you will. As, as the interviewer. So you're a technical writer. Um, I had never heard of technical writing before we met. Can you maybe explain what that exactly is? I mean, yeah, and sure. also how it impacts businesses, because that's really what we're interested in, right? Yeah, uh, most people have heard of copywriters. So they're the people that, that sell things and that influence people to take action. So buy products, um, support political campaigns, support charities, and that sort of thing. But a technical writer would... Um, work to inform and educate the audience. So, <clears throat> so um, they'll explain how products work, they'll um, write support manuals, help guides, um, and they'll get into things like legal and HR and, and that kind of thing as well. So my focus isn't on selling a product, but it is on representing a brand with um, showing how their products and services work. So. Um, is mainly aimed at existing customers. So what I do is, is give them that information and it will help them um, use the products better, stay as loyal customers, become brand advocates and that sort of thing. And usually the technical part of it is, is because often we're, we're explaining things in a step-by-step -step way. So, it's, um, so it, it might be IT, um, it might be anything to do with computers, it might be some other technical process. That's where the technical comes in. That makes a lot of sense. It's, it's interesting because communication is so important in business, in every single thing that we do. And usually when systems break down, either within a business or you know, when you are like talking to your customers and things, it's because the communication isn't always the clearest. Yes, um, and of course, uh, you, while you, while your work isn't technically on selling, you could tie it to customer lifetime value and customer oh, definitely. attention, definitely. which is huge. It's huge. That's the biggest thing. Far easier to retain a customer than it is to hire a new one. So 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 important. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think um, you know a lot of times you you invest all this money in your sales funnel, and then you get a customer. And then the experience of, 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 you know, the documentation that they look at is terrible. Um, and so it's like you were talking to Cole the other day, you know, brand identity has to go everywhere, right throughout your business. So it's not just, it's not just on the front screen, it's everywhere. And that, that includes in your support documentations. So for me, it's all about um, understanding the brand, working with the tone of voice and trying to put that into the documentation that I create. Um, and a lot of technical writing is quite boring, but I try to put a bit of personality into it. So if a, you know, if a brand has its own identity, that has to absolutely has to come out in the voice of the technical documents. So if you look at people like MailChimp and Buffer, I mean, they do fantastic work with their documents and you can tell that it's, it, it's kind of all the same thing, whereas you don't often get that with other brands. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Buffer are definitely one of my favorite companies in the world for their branding, their transparency, their communication, all of that. So uh, you're spot on. One of the words that, you, that I'm going to pick on is experience. I think that that's the biggest thing. I mean, I've, I've done a few of these, these podcasts now, and the thing that seems to come up in every single one is it's about the experience that you're providing your customer. Ultimately, you know, that's going to make or break your business. Yeah. And uh, they need to, I think it's really interesting because I see when you think of like, when I think of 
technical like how to's and things I think of me trying to put together DIY furniture <laughs> or set up something and I never read the instructions because I don't understand them and they make me feel stupid and yes. I don't want to feel stupid as a customer. I don't want to feel dumb like I can't do something. That's absolutely um, right. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of branching out into not just writing, but also producing screencasts. So I'll produce short 30-second or one-minute videos that explain how to do processes. And, and my customers are finding that that's a good way of reaching people. If people don't want to necessarily sit down and read a wall of text. I, I don't think anyone wants to do that anymore. So I think the future is visual communication. And, you know, with the advent of things like the iPhone, no, no user manual. It's just all intuitive, well-designed. And if you do need some help, it's usually pretty easy to, to go through the steps. So that's what I'm trying to do a bit more of these days, visual communication. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're absolutely right. Um, I don't know. I've never once been able to find the, the, the verification for the stat. But it does seem to get posted everywhere that we consume images 60,000 times faster than text. Yep. And video is obviously a lot more captivating as well. Yes. But being able to, to just see something, I think being able to see it in front of you and understand it step by step and have someone go through it can make a huge difference. Yeah, that's right. In that. Do you find it difficult? Because I can imagine you working with very different companies so you're not you're not focused on one thing you're if you're working for different businesses do you find that hard well that that's where a lot of the skill of the technical writer comes in is to try and understand the business and do the research to to kind of become the ideal user and then write in their language so you know i'll do a lot of work to understand who, who it is that i'm writing for and what kind of content they're going to consume most easily so that, that takes a lot of time that's the whole research iceberg that's under the water that a lot of people don't think of when they say you know can you write 500 words on so and so well yes but the writing is the is really the tip of the iceberg it's the research and the understanding and the excellent and thinking about how to explain things in the best way possible that's the thing that takes the time that's the thing that takes the expertise so yeah, it's it's not easy, um, and that's why not everyone's suited to be a writer, I guess. But I come from a quality assurance background, so I'm always about making the customer process as easy as possible. Um, so I guess I guess it's naturally led to to me being able to explain things to others um, quite well. I hope. Yeah, well, it's it's a great skill to have, um, and you know, it's like you were saying the the market research it it tends to come back to that knowing your customer yeah, and being absolutely. able to not just communicate and share your message, but share it in a way that they can understand and really resonate with. It's yeah. huge. It's hugely valuable. What do you think are the biggest mistakes that you see from small businesses, mainly online, but just in general as well, um, when it comes to their writing? Well, writing. Yeah. The number one mistake is always not understanding your audience and what they need. So we've, I guess we've already talked about that. But that is everywhere I go, um, I'll speak to a new customer and I'll ask them, you know, who, who is your ideal audience? And it's very hard for them to pin that down. So we have to go through a kind of question and answer process to try and work out exactly who we're writing for. And then we try and target the documents at that one person make them feel as though we're writing directly to them so that's the number one mistake that people make but also people try to use complex language sometimes you try to use jargon to, to, to make you sound more important or more intelligent than you are but the fact of the matter is that you know nobody ever complained that some piece of text was too easy to read the simpler you make it the more it will be appreciated and also just be more human in your communications. You know, we're all, yes, we're businesses, but we're all people at the end of the day. So if you can make some content simple to understand and build some kind of empathy, even in technical documentation, it can be done. Um, that is the way to, to, to get success with documents, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. I think, you know, just be human. It's huge. I know that we're both followers and fans of Mark Schaefer, who says Absolutely. this all the time and it really is true like i don't 
I don't understand why we do this because we all seem to do it at some point is we forget that we're all just people and we're just <laughs> communicated to other people and we're all users and consumers as well. So we're very good at knowing what we like and what we don't like and complaining when we're on the other end of it, but not considering that as a business. Um, and what you, again, I guess that comes back to the customer experience as well yeah. and making it as simple and easy to follow as, as we can. And it, like you said, simple, simple is good. Simple is best. Absolutely. And just to, just to, just to piggyback on something that Cole said in your last interview, just be more helpful as well. You know, the best brands will, will just go out of their way to help their customers and cut out the fluff, cut out the self-promotion, just get to the point. People don't have time to sit and read loads and loads of content. Be helpful and just bring that impact straight away and, and you will get you'll get more loyalty out of it. So it's, there's a financial reward from doing this, but it's just a good thing to do anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. I think as well, if it's really clear, whether you are doing copy editing or technical writing or anything, if it's clear, then you're going to get your audience to take <laughs> action because they understand what that is. Sometimes it can be hard to see when it's diluted in a lot of, a lot of text. <laughs> it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so with that in mind, what would you suggest as, you know, maybe one to three action steps that small businesses could take to enhance their writing, like from today, from watching this? I know that, you know, sometimes the problem is they don't know how. So people know, okay, I need to share this message, but I don't know how to do it. So what would you suggest are one to three action steps? Okay, well, the first thing I would always do is just, is just do a brain dump of all of the content that you want to get out there. No filter at all. Just write down everything that you want to say to your customers and then start a process of just kind of ruthlessly cutting out the fluff, cutting out the fat, leaving the core message. If you just had 30 seconds in a lift to tell people what you want to say, what would that thing be? Keep it short keep it simple, no big words, and most importantly, think carefully about who your customer is and the kind of language that is going to appeal to them. Um, I call it pen portraits. I've written a blog post about this where we don't just look at normal demographics, but we really try and go deep into who is reading the content. Is it a male? Is it a female? What are they called? How many kids do they have? What magazines do they subscribe to? Get into their head and you will then find the words that will, that will reach them. And if you have difficulty doing that, that's where you bring in a professional editor, a professional writer who can support your brand and really make it shine. And then that can make the difference in terms of sales and brand loyalty and brand advocacy and all the good things that you want to achieve. Love that. Love it. So true. I love that you picked on the point of going really deep with your audience. Yeah. You know, it's not just geographics, demographics. You've got to get those psychographics in. People Absolutely. use, your audience uses a certain type of language. And the only way that you know that, you know, can understand that, you can't find that information by looking at general statistics and things. Like you say, you have to go deep with that research and truly understand your audience because then you'll find the words or hire someone who can help you with that if it's a little over. Love that. If you had to sum it up in a tweetable, I know that's really, really difficult. <laughs> what would it be? I would say 140 characters. Well, write simple, helpful content directed at one person. Love it. Love that. It's funny how you can do that and reach millions when you do that, when you speak to one person. It's like uh, something Marie Forleo says, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one, right? Um, Talk to that one person. Absolutely right. Now, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so, so much for uh, taking the time to go through this interview. I do, of course, have one last question because you brand yourself as a super nerd, which, <laughs> means, which means I know that you must have thought about this one question. Okay. And if you could have, if you had a superhero name, what would it be? And what would your superpower be? If you've thought of that, as well, I'm sure you've thought of your superpower. Right. <laughs> well, that, that's, to be honest, I'm not sure what my superhero name would be, but I'd love to be able to travel through time. 
So I'd be the time traveler. I'd love to be able to go to the start of the universe and the end of the universe and any point in between. That would, that would be, be And if we ever crack that, I'm on board. <laughs> that would be awesome. You know, when I, was, when I was younger, I used to, and I don't know why, but for some reason, it's still, there's a little part of me that still believes it. I used to think there was like certain doors like you could just like be walking along a street and there'd be like certain doors where you could open up and you yeah. could walk inside and be like in another part of the world in seconds. Like I don't know why I believe that, but a little part of me still hopes it's true. There's a short story for you right there. Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy. Thank you so much, John. I know that people watching this are going to be like, that John guy, he's kind of awesome and I really want to connect with him. How do I do that? Well, I'm, I'm blessed with a very unusual surname, so I'm quite easy to find. It's Esperian everywhere. So that's E-S-P-I-R-I-A-N. And I'm on mostly on Twitter. That's my favorite network, but you can find me on <laughs> uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and my own website and blog. So, uh, yeah, come and check me out. Um, I, will, I will be as friendly as I can be and be as helpful as I can be. So, yeah, can't wait to meet you all. I have to say, John is the, one of the best people in the world when it comes to social media and engaging and caring and showing what it truly represents. Wow, thanks. You put the social in social media. So love that. Everyone should go and connect with John. Also, we will link that blog post that you mentioned as well because I think it would be super helpful. Thank you so much, John. I really, really enjoyed speaking with you. You shared so much incredible value. And uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. Fabulous, Chloe. Thanks a lot for inviting me. It's been a real pleasure.